Now our next objective here uh, is to get a first look at the Sigma Spectrum Infusion Pump, how to use it and how to troubleshoot it. I know it might be easier for some of you to simply follow these steps in person with the pump in hand, uh, but think of this portion as an introduction to familiarize yourself with the settings. All right, now let's take a quick look at the pump itself. From the image, you can see the pump. You could see all of its parts, pretty self-explanatory. I won't go into much detail, but I did want to highlight a few points, uh, a few parts. Here's the display screen where you'll see many of your prompts. Here are the soft keys to kind of toggle between your choices. Uh, here's the IV line door. Here's a keypad and all of the buttons. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Um, the screen will guide you when those buttons are necessary. Now we'll go straight into programming an infusion. Um, your initial, initial, initial first step is to um, take your infusion, infusion pump and stabilize it on a surface or IV pole. Um, they can be pretty pricey, so again, you don't want to damage that. And then your first official step will be to power on the pump using the on-off button. And that same button can be used to power it down. Next, you'll be prompted to select a new patient or not. To keep the previous patient's data, just press no. Let's program a new patient's data, press yes. The next step in reality would be to set up your IV line and insert it into the, into the IV line door, uh, but we'll actually practice this in class um, so you get the hang of that. And then next, you'll just select your care area or floor using the blue arrow soft keys and press OK to confirm. This is just to help um, you find the built-in library with the, the intended medication of administration. Next step is to select the drug or fluid you will be running by typing in the first two letters of the drug name. So for example, DO for dobutamine. Then you, again, using this arrow soft keys to highlight the desired drug. And then press OK to pick it. Then the screen will next prompt you to enter all these required values, such as the patient's weight, the drug dose, the rate, the intended rate, and all of that will calculate the time uh, needed to run that medication. And again, you want to review these parameters um, and compare it with the protocol calculations that you just found. Um, this is probably the most paramount step in all of this because you just got all this context and all this background of chemotherapy and drug safety. So you want to make sure you want to double, triple check everything that you're putting into the pump. And it's also pretty much the second to last step before you start the infusion and press run. The next step will um, ask you to confirm all clamps are open, the tubing is not kinked, and all drops are flowing. And then you press yes to confirm that using the soft keys. The run screen will appear indicating that the infusion is running. So again, pretty straightforward stuff. A lot of it is just following the prompts on the screen. Now this last section, I did want to Add some information about the built-in lock system and alarm, so just you have a more well-rounded idea of, of the pump system. Uh, one thing you want to make sure of is double-check that the pump automatically locks after approximately 60 seconds. Um, if not, refer your hospital troubleshooting tech team for assistance. And if that's not the case, you could also manually lock and unlock the pump using the code 429, which spells out key on the keypad. Uh, again, all of these are for safety precautions. You don't want family members or any unauthorized members uh, messing with the pump. And then we're going to go into the alarms that come out of the pump um, and that require you to for you to do some troubleshooting. The most common ones I'll be covering. One of them is inactivity, which essentially means no action has been taken for at least two minutes. Maybe you're still setting up um, the room, you're setting up your line, you're talking with a patient, simply press any key to silence the machine or once you're ready, start the pump by pressing run. Or run a new infusion, or you could turn it off uh, if you're not working with it. Another common alarm is air in line, and this is important because you want to make sure there's no, um, there's not a presence of air in the line that could cause any um, harm to the patient. You could also press run to advance any small bubbles. Again, check for, check for kinks in the tubing. And then two of the most common alarms that you'll see is the occlusion alarms. Um, upstream or downstream. Upstream essentially means it's above the pump and downstream means it's below uh, the pump, which uh, both of these could mean that there is a closed clamp somewhere, there's kinked IV tubing, 
uh, in particular with downstream occlusion, that it could mean that the patient is lying on their line. So again, you just want to assess the whole line and make sure there's no occlusion or restriction of flow. And those are your most common alarms. Um, and as an overview, this is, um, in this lesson, we were able to get a pretty good foundation of what it means to use the sigma spectrum infusion system. We got a uh, the fundamentals on chemotherapy and drug safety. Uh, we were able to even practice uh, using a drug therapy protocol and its calculations. And lastly, we went through programming an infusion pump and looking at its lock and alarm features. If you have uh, any questions, feel free to message me uh, or email me about them. Or you could look at these uh, further resources um, to answer any of your questions. Uh, you can look at the Children's Oncology Group, uh, guidelines for safe administration of chemotherapy, or the operator's manual. All right, thanks for listening.